Good morning everybody. I'd like to do a series of videos on the uh, Messianic Kingdom. Now, I've started to post some scriptures in dispensational theology and the scriptures I want to post um, are mainly Old Testament scriptures, although there'll be some New Testament as well later on. Um, and they're very, very extensive. Now, I'm not quite sure how often I'm going to be able to do these videos, and I'm not quite sure how many of them I'm ultimately going to be able to do. But I'd like to um, do it sufficient to enable me to explain what I believe the Old Testament says about the Messianic Kingdom. Now, the Messianic Kingdom is the time when the Lord Jesus Christ will reign in Jerusalem from Zion. Um, he will have world domination. It's in the future, of course. But let's first of all start off with Isaiah chapter 2, verse 2. I'll read the passage and just make a few comments and uh, appreciate people's feedback on this. So Isaiah chapter 2, verse 2 says, And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted um, above the hills and all nations shall flow into it and many people shall go and say come ye let us go up to the mountain of the Lord to the house of the God of Jacob and he will teach us his ways and we will and we will walk in his paths for out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem and he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks nation shall not lift up sword against nation neither shall they learn war any more now this remarkable prophecy of Isaiah has uh, at least 10 features to it and I'd like to describe those features there are some people that would say that the word mountain in this passage is referring to a kingdom now I can understand that that's that's an acceptable thing although I happen to not agree with that point of view but I can understand that point of view and it I don't think that point of view contradicts anything I'm saying um, the mountain of the Lord's house will be established on the top of the mountains. Now, I don't really see any reason to believe that this is not speaking literally of the mountain of Zion, upon which the Lord's house, that is the millennial temple, will be built. And it will be established on the top of the mountains. And the second point is that the mountain of the Lord's house will be the highest mountain. Um, now, at the moment, of course, um, the Jerusalem, where the uh, where the temple would be built, is not the highest mountain in the world. But we do read in other scriptures that there will be such a great earthquake um, in the end times that the highest mountains will be made low and the valleys will be lifted up. In fact, that's actually what uh, the message of um, John the Baptist uh, was, that there will come a day in which the mountains will be brought down and the valleys will be lifted up. Now, when we take a look at the two concepts of the mountains and the valleys, we see that this is a topographical significance. This is nothing to do with kingdoms. It has to do with the topography of the earth. There will be such a massive earthquake that if you can imagine a sandbox being shaken, you'll find that all the top bits are brought down and all the valleys are filled up. But that aside, that aside, let's have a look at the third point. It says all nations will come to it. And whether we take it to be the highest mountain in the world where Zion will be placed or whether we think of the kingdom it's still the same point because all the nations will come to it I happen to believe that it is referring to the mountain first the, the fourth, fourth point is they will come to learn and to seek God's ways you see one of the particular features of the messianic kingdom is that the Messiah himself will sit upon his throne in Zion in the temple and he will have rule over all the nations of the world. In fact, if you take a look at Isaiah chapter 6, we have an actual picture of the Lord Jesus sitting in his temple 
Um, some people think that's a vision of heaven, but it's very, very clearly based upon the earth. And it says the glory of the Lord fills all the earth. OK, so it's definitely an earthly thing. Um, you'll notice also it says that they will come to learn and to seek God's ways. The nations of the world will come to the Lord Jesus in person and they'll come because they want to know how they can live righteously before their God in order that they might uh, not receive his judgments. Um, notice also the fifth point is that the law of the Lord will go out of Zion. So it's the Lord Jesus himself that will establish the law of the world and the whole world will be brought to the law of the Lord. The sixth point is that the word of the Lord will go out of Jerusalem. So this is the oral message of God. It's not the scriptures. It's the word of the Lord. It will go out of Jerusalem. But the seventh point is that Christ will judge between nations and will rebuke many people. So in this particular point, we say that not only Christ is, is going to be present in the world, but he will be the judge between nations. So the nations will still exist and he will judge between them when there is um, conflict between nations Christ will step in and he will judge between them and he will rebuke many people so there will be lots of people in the world that will come under the personal admonition of Christ he will rebuke them for the way in which they live and for the way in which they speak and um, the, the, the eighth point and the ninth and the tenth point is very significant. It says swords will become plowshares and spears will become pruning hooks. Now we can't expect Isaiah to understand the words that are current in our modern lives. So Isaiah is using the words of his day to describe the tools and the implements of a future day. And so he has to work within the phraseology and the words of his own period. He says the swords will become plowshares and the spears will become pruning hooks. Now, what he's saying is this. Is he saying that the actual instruments of war will be turned into agricultural purposes. The metal won't be wasted, it won't be thrown away, it will be changed, it will be put back into the furnace and it will come out as an instrument of um, agriculture and horticulture because there will be pruning hooks. At the tenth point is this, it says there will never be any wars between nations again and nobody will ever learn the arts of war anymore now then there are people today that say the kingdom of course started when the lord jesus christ came to earth and that we're living now in the kingdom today well i have a very simple question to ask then if that is so then why is it and when will it be that the prophecy of isaiah will be fulfilled because after all if the kingdom has existed for two thousand years then when will the nations cease to cease to have war with each other and is it not true that um, amongst the nations of the world that the armed forces do learn to fight wars even today? So, so clearly this, all of the events here, that the mountain of the Lord being established on the top of the mountains, all the nations coming to it, that they might seek the guidance of the Lord. They will come and learn God's ways and they will seek God and the law will go out of Zion and the word of the Lord will go out of Jerusalem. These things aren't happening today. We have to be very frank about that. These things are not happening today. Christ is not in person in, upon the earth to judge between nations or to rebuke people. Um, the swords and the spears have not become plowshares and pruning hooks and the nations of the world are at war with one another and war is something that men train to do. So clearly the events um, of this passage, all 10 points, are not experienced in the world today and that is why it is on this basis that we say that the millennial kingdom is something that's not happened yet. It will only happen at the personal, actual return of the Lord Jesus to earth. And when he comes to earth, 
he will establish his kingdom, he will establish his temple, it will be situated on the highest mountain, and the word of the Lord will go out from Zion, and Christ will judge between nations, and he will rebuke nations, and he will abolish war, all the instruments of war will be turned into instruments of peace, and there will never be war again between nations, and nobody will ever learn the arts of war anymore. So this is something that's future. This is why we call ourselves pre-millennial, because we, live, we, we believe that we're living in days today that are before the millennial kingdom. Of course, the, the millennial kingdom won't take place till after the tribulation. And the tribulation won't take place until after the rapture. So there are a number of things that are yet to happen before this, full, this prophecy can be fulfilled. First of all, there needs to be the rapture, the exit of the church from this world. There needs to be the period of the tribulation in which the, the Jews will have a temple again. And in that temple, the Antichrist will set up an abomination. And at the end of that time, the Antichrist will be judged and Christ will come in person into this world to establish his kingdom. Now we're hoping, God willing, to put up a number of these scriptures from time to time. And I think what we're going to be able to show is that these events are not an experience of the world of today and that they are something which is yet future. So I look forward to your comments and your questions and uh, from time to time we'll put up more videos to explain some of these scriptures. So we wish you well and look forward to hearing from you all. God bless you. Bye for now.